small field but a strong lineup for the opener as well. So this is a class two of the 1800 uh, metres. Savaquin heads the field. He's a two-time winner over the 1650, but four times at the trip. He's been runner-up three times. Money Catcher hasn't managed to build on that third place in the derby just yet. Uh, Beluga hasn't won beyond a mile to date. Charity Go is winner two starts back. Soulmates, uh, good second to everyone's delight last night. As favourite, only beat a short head. Tianchi Monster comes up in class, the last start winner. And uh, Garitis for Alexi Bedell. And Danny Shum will jump from barrier number five. All right, so we'll have a look at the uh, the speed map as we always do here, uh, Tom. Good to slow, I suppose, with the um, the lack of numbers, I suppose, as much as anything else. Soulmate might, might not get a lot of pressure. No, there won't be, and uh, he actually handed up last time out because Telecom Fighters went around and uh, took the lead off him. He still boxed on fairly well. I thought uh, did Soulmate, but he's a horse that does like to lead. You'd think Money Catcher uh, would be in close attendance, and uh, with all that, uh, Paul Beluga from Barrier 1 should just get the, the perfect run in transit. Yeah, he should do as well. Then Tianchi Monster, Garitis. A charity go generally gets back and Savaquin likes to get back as well, so I can't see too much changes from in it. Interesting, Tianchi Monster made that mid-race move mm. last uh, time out, so that was uh, in a race over 1,800 uh, metres and it was to a good effect for him there whether he does that this time or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, we sometimes see Savaquin getting mm. rolling early yeah. as well, he's, he's more of a sort of a rhythm sort of uh, horse, so possible some fun and games down the, uh, the back straight there. We'll have a look at a couple of runners in a moment. We'll start off though with uh, Zach Purton out at Trackwork speaking about his mount, Beluga. Zach Beluga returns to Happy Valley. He hasn't been there for a while and you haven't been on his back for a little while, but um, you know he's very capable. Yeah, of course. Uh, I've had a bit of luck on him um, throughout his career and uh, he gets around Happy Valley well enough, so that's not a problem. Um, we'll just get him in the right spot and let him do his thing. I know obviously you didn't run him last time, but just on that run, obviously the ground was, was very tacky at Chartin that day. He was about one of the only horses to stay the far side, but, but ran a very a good race in the conditions. How, on that occasion, were ground conditions favouring the, the outside? I mean, he's obviously run such a good race on perhaps the, the unfavoured side. Yeah, it certainly was better right up against the outside rail. If you could get sort of within three horses of the outside rail, it was um, faster ground. And he obviously stayed back through there on the inside and, and competed there and, and looked like he was a chance, maybe with 150 to go. And, and then just got bogged down a little bit, so it, it was a good effort. You've got a really good record on the horse, obviously four wins. His last run around here, he was actually chasing far, far, so that form in the context of this looks very strong. Yeah, of course, uh, there's no, um, no problem with him getting around the track. He, he certainly handles it well. Um, so he's, he's, uh, he's a nice horse to be riding. He's in good form. Um, that far, far form uh, was pretty strong there as well, but um, his more recent form is good as well, and, and, and that's probably the more important part. Just a smallish field, you're drawn one. You'll have a good handle on the speed. You rode Soulmate recently, he likes to roll on. Money Catch is another horse you've ridden. Do you, do you see it turning into a bit of a tactical affair? Are you able to get a good spot from there, do you think? Yeah, these small fields are always tactical. So um, it just, you know, you, you can't really predict what's going to happen. You just got to play it uh, as it unfolds and uh, we'll work it out as we go. Zach then on Beluga for David Hall and the team have got a, a good strike rate as well between them. Um, what of the others though, Tom? We'll get straight into the, uh, the replays here. Money Catcher. Um, he's going to be popular again, I'm sure, and I'm sure his time will come, but it hasn't come as quickly as I thought. No, I thought it was going to arrive before now too, uh, Andrew. He's been a little bit disappointing, a shade disappointing really for, for, for what he showed through the four-year-old series, Paul, which was really good stuff in the, the derby third there. He's come back to handicap racing here and he just hasn't really gone on with it all. He didn't have a, a great turn of foot here whatsoever. No, I, look, I just wonder if... I mean, he, he was here for the derby, right? Mm. So he was trained for the derby. And anything after the derby, I think, is probably an afterthought, really, because he ran well in it, you know. But that, that was his job, I thought, was here for the mm. derby. So... That's why I, I've, I've got him in, but only on a minor. He'd only had a handful of starts mm. before the derby, so you'd, you'd kind of think that there'd still be something there, but there's not hasn't no. been really. No. As a form reference as well, um, Running Glory just won that race. He finished second in the race that Beluga um, ran in that uh, the race you saw when Nick was speaking with uh, Zach. We'll move on, though. Uh, Paul Garita, Soulmate and Savaquin. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, all three of these have, have definitely got chances. Uh, Soulmate likes to lead and roll along, but Telecom Fighters took him on, didn't want to get into a speed battle, but he fought on really strongly. I thought it was a really nice run from him. And Garitas wasn't far away either, and we know he likes it here at Happy Valley. So I've got both those to it. He's had a good season, his uh, Soulmate, uh, considering it took him a, a wee while to win his uh, first uh, race. He's won three this season, three seconds and a fourth. He's only missed top 
uh, four on three occasions. So it's been relatively consistent. Mm. It was beaten favourite there, but uh, there wasn't a great margin um, in it, was there, as far as that was um, concerned. Um, now, Lyle Hewitson will be uh, hungry for success after sitting the last uh, couple of meetings out. Tommy, he's got a good book. You'd see him picking up um, a winner, maybe? Yeah, he's got a number of uh, handy rides. Look, Smiling Face was a winner in Class 5 last uh, start. He's riding that one for uh, Douglas White. Took Kyrus, a while to break through. But... Did, did, uh, <laughs> Kyrus Unicorn, a uh, few things went against him last time out, Paul, but he was heavily punted that day too. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Look, Big Two has been disappointing. I think he can win, though. He, he did well. He was odds on at his last start. Do like Mighty Vela down in grade as well. Exponential, I think, is going to find it tough from his wide draw. Mm. All right, we've got one more race to have a look at uh, here, Paul. It's Tianchi Monster, who comes up in class for his last start win. Yeah, it was a really good win from him. It was a great ride uh, as well. He, he took the initiative, didn't he, and uh, took off uh, early, did Vincent Ho. And, um, he, look, he, that was the winning of the race. They couldn't catch him. Smaller field here. I, I don't know if the jockeys will let him go. He didn't quite make it in for me. Yeah, what's he offer here? He's off a mark of 85. He's won up to uh, 80 in the past. He hasn't been able to win off a, sort of a mark higher than that looking through his uh, overall record. So I've left him out of this race. Mm, but you could make some sort of argument for, mm. for most. I mean, Charity goes the outside at the moment, but he's more than capable as well on his day. You could make an argument for every single runner in this case. Mm. Yeah, you're right. He, he is more than capable as well. And, uh, look, he's got every chance as well. He's the one horse we haven't talked about, isn't he? Yeah, but uh, who made your top four in the end? Well, I like Beluga. I just think he's going to be in the right place. Barrier number one, uh, just beaten by far, far at his only start of the course. Like, so I don't think, I think Happy Valley's not a problem and Zach seemed pretty confident as well. So I think he can win. Uh, Soul made in there for second from the front. Uh, money catcher, just a little bit one pace, as Tom said, and Garitis as well. Three, five, two and seven. Yeah, I'm going to settle with uh, Beluga as well. Uh, I think he's uh, nicely placed uh, here, comes off that good to yielding track where he was down on the inside uh, part of the track uh, last uh, time out. That's where they weren't winning from that day at uh, Charton. You needed to get towards the outside. Zach Purton on uh, board. He's had uh, four wins aboard this horse in the past. Muddy Catcher goes in, but he really does need to uh, front up, I feel, this time round. Uh, Soulmate's been consistent. And Savaquin, he took off wider off the end of the back straight, but I thought as, as response in the straight was pretty limited so I'll give him another chance because he is capable of course and distance three second placing from four starts so a bit of a blip on his radar last start three two five and one I've left money catcher out um, I think Beluga probably is the one to beat but Garitis for me I think they need to get going early with 118 pounds on his back uh, maybe he can spring something of a surprise there that's race number three